lot of luxury homes on this show that are pretty pricey. But modern luxury living doesn't always need to be unaffordable. Hi, I'm Eddie Vasquez, principal of EAV Architect. Modern design is not just for the ultra rich. It can be brought to the masses and to regular people. We love a small project like this because it displays how we can design and achieve something that is modern and not multi-million dollars. See how creative design can be applied to achieve luxury living at an affordable budget on today's Soplo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. Turning your existing house into your dream home may require building from scratch. Though it could be a scary proposition in most cases, it doesn't have to break the bank. This newly built 3,700 square foot home has four bedrooms and four baths. The property's high ceilings and great architectural details make it feel grand. So we're joined today by Eddie Vasquez, architect and owner of EAV Architect. Eddie, welcome to SoFlo Home Project. Thank you, nice so, to be here. So Eddie, we normally start on the inside of the home, but we're starting outside because I wanna talk about the facade. Yes, what we start with is the big impressions. The entry is oversized purposely to, to bring you into the house, to pull you in, and to have your focus there as you come in. So adding that in with the wood elements that are also there as well as with the stucco. So kind of mixing multiple materials is a good characteristic of this modern styling? Uh, yes, but typically we keep it to three elements. Okay. Once you go above three elements, you start to lose the impact of those. So you've got wood, you've got the concrete look as well as the stucco itself. Correct. So let's talk about the entry leading in. You've got a great pattern going on in here. What did you use here in order to kind of create this design? We tried to get away from the standard block design that they do with the grass in the middle. So we did a linear element Very and, cool. and scattered out. The, you know, it kind of brings you in and says, hey, this house is a little bit special. So Eddie, when you're designing the tropical modern homes like this one here behind us, you know, the tall door with the glass, is that something that you typically might do is kind of keep that more um, transparent with the glass rather than a solid door? Or was that just a choice here? Yes, it's very important to bring in a lot of light and the first impression as you come in the door has to have that high feeling and light. We have flat roofs and they're made out of concrete for hurricane protection, but that's one of the staples of modern design. When we say flat roof, literally it's not flat, it has a little bit of a slope, a quarter inch slope, but in modern architecture you need to create that linearness. And then you also have sort of multi-levels to that. Yes, we like to create a layering effect with the overhangs to give this that linear feel so it pops out. And it makes it so visually interesting as well. Yes. You did this project with affordable luxury in mind. Uh, yes, good design does not have to be expensive. We used standard materials and if they're designed well and put together well, they give the impression of you know, great architecture. Absolutely. Sometimes you may think that you can't afford an architect in Miami, but you can, uh, the architect's cost is a fraction of the construction cost, and he can save you that percentage very easily with a good, efficient design. So Eddie, we've established what a great facade of the home this is, but there's so much more to see inside, so let's go check it out. All right. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we get expert tips on architectural design and home layout. I'm Tat with FHIA, and I've been asked a lot of questions lately about warranties we're going to discuss on today's SoFlo Home Project. Would you like to win a $500 Goya Seasonings Greetings gift card? Of course you would. Enter today. Go to local10.com for your chance to win Goya's Seasonings Greetings. Because if it's Goya, it has to be good. back to 
SoFlo Home Project. I'm Alina Capra, and we are here today with Eddie Vasquez, the architect who designed this gorgeous property. And Eddie, we were just at the exterior of the home, and the interior is equally as beautiful. Thank you, Elena. Upon entering the home, you are greeted by a spacious great room. The high ceilings, architectural details, and tall windows give the space a grand scale. Yes, as I explained before, three elements are the basis of your design. We have the wood, we have the stucco, in this case now the drywall, and here you bring in the glass. And the element coming in from my outside, I'm bringing this concrete element all the way into the house. It pulls you in. Now, speaking of impact, this wall definitely is something you see when you walk in and it has such great impact. Talk to us a little bit about planning something like a feature wall such as this. Well, we always say that the big elements create the impressions, but it's the detail that create the memories. Absolutely. Uh, this wood element looks expensive, but it's pine. Southern Pine. Wow. So that brings it back to affordable luxury. Yes. Lighting is a key to a good project and some people think that the light is important. No, it's what you light that's important. Great tip. So you need to, right here we put recessed uh, lights in the slab that light up the wood element. So at night I can imagine this looks stunning. Yes. So Eddie, as I look around in this the main great room here, you had mentioned the windows are just as important of an element as the materials you're adding in when creating a uh, Florida modern uh, style of home. Talk to us a little bit about the ways you were able to do that and still keep an affordable, luxurious feel. The key to providing an affordable luxury is to spend the money where it really counts. Great. And the ceiling height is one of them. Uh, this height was 10 feet or 9 feet, it would just have a completely different feel. Yeah, this gives such a grandness. The glass is the other. We have to bring in a lot of light and to bring in the nature inside. Uh, this space is about inside-outside connection and we need that. So all the beautiful details are very important, but also the space planning is equally as important when you are designing a home and we are going to check out how Eddie tackled the space plan of this home but first, let's see what Tac Granada from FHAA has for us today. So this question has come up a lot lately and I've been getting emails and phone calls and when I've had the opportunity to meet with folks, they've been bringing up the idea and how important warranties are when we're discussing different hurricane impact windows and doors from different manufacturers ordered different ways. In order for a manufacturer to honor the warranty, the product has to be ordered to the specifications to achieve that warranty. And now, once it's delivered, it has to be installed to their specifications also to potentially meet and get their warranty. So for a consumer, we really have to have a lot of trust and confidence in the contractor we choose to not only do a great installation, especially as it relates to the Florida Building Code and our perception of the Florida Building Code, which is, as homeowners, we think if it was permitted and inspected, it was done the best way possible. Well, in reality, the Florida Building Code means if it is done, it at least has to be done to this specification. Doesn't mean it was done the best way. It means if you're, in the case of a window, if you're removing a window from your home, you at least have to do it to this minimum specification. Not the best way, minimum. And a lot of times when we're talking about warranties from a manufacturer, that minimum specification of Florida Building Code does not meet the specifications required to achieve the warranty. So a lot of homeowners that we meet with who have had projects done in the past and thought they were under warranty, unfortunately weren't because the installation team and the contractor that did the project didn't do it to the standard or the level that was required to be under the warranty. So it's a really important thing. Warranties could be really important and really valuable if chosen correctly and if done correctly with the right contractor, ordered the right way, installed the right way. It could be the best investment you ever get. Hopefully that was helpful. And again, uh, make sure education and the more you know going into the project, the better experience you're gonna have. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Tat. So Eddie, the space plan was so important in the design of this home. And I thought it would be cool to share with our viewers a little bit behind the scenes of the way you kind of map out and plan the space plan. Uh, believe it or not, I still work in sketch and pen and paper. I a lot too. of architects don't. I love that, <laughs> old school. 
So it's important to break down the parts into simplistic uh, pieces. Uh, here you'll see the bar of the garage and master bedroom, and then you see the bar uh, of the space of the other bedrooms, and then everything that's shaded here is the high two-story space. Okay. It's important that when we come through the space, once you get to this space area, you'll have a great view of the outside. Also here, it shows in color format the different bedrooms, three bedrooms on this side, master bedroom, kitchen in the back. So Eddie, that's sort of like how you go through mapping out the functionality of the space as, long as, as well as the aesthetic, right? Yes, they go hand in hand because you can have a great layout, but if it doesn't work functionally and it doesn't work impact-wise, it's no good. In the space plan, you use a lot of cool architectural features to I think kind of create more interest in the space. For example, this wall behind me doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling. And of course, there's a lot of ceiling height. Yeah, so in an open floor plan, you still have to provide functional elements. And it's best to take advantage of those functional elements and create impact images, you know, and feelings. Uh, this wall does that. And now another wall where you created great impact is right on this side and that has recessed shelves with lighting. We decided to add that to have a transition into the family room. The family room is a lower ceiling. Uh, this is 14 feet high and that's about 10 feet high. So that created a nice transition into that family room. It's a really nice and decorative way to kind of bridge the gap of the ceiling heights. And you could have easily had just a wall and some doors. So this is a great way to add a little more style to them. Yes. And we've got a couple more surprises behind some of these walls that we're going to check out when we come back. Coming up next, we talk about good workflow in kitchen design. Welcome back to Soquel Home Project. I'm Alina Capra and we're continuing our home tour with architect Eddie Vasquez. Eddie, so before the break, we were talking about the space planning of this home and we said there was going to be a little surprise behind the wall and now here we are. <laughs> because the kitchen. It, but there's more to it than that because you did something behind that wall that you can't really see from the other side. So in between the living room and the kitchen, there's a actual functional room. There's the pantry and a second kitchen. It has a depth to it, but once you're in either side of the room, you cannot perceive that. No, it just looks like there's just a regular four and three quarter inch wall behind me, but reality is it's several feet. Yes, and the key is not to go all the way up to the roof. With the open space plan, the kitchen layout basically provides that flow that is necessary. You can access it from this side, access it from that side. Yeah, it really has a great flow. And again, now you get all of this great natural light because you have these windows up so high. Yes. And now speaking of windows, another thing that I think is, is really great here is that you bought a window into the backsplash. Talk to us about planning a window in a kitchen area because sometimes it could really bring a nice element with some greenery. Yes, it has to be planned very carefully because sometimes you get the height of the window off. You gotta make sure you account for the floor thickness, the counter, and then a little backsplash. It's really such a nice way to bring that element of the outdoors in, but then right in front of you, you also have a great wall of windows to the outside as well. So from the breakfast nook, you can actually see the family room and see the kids through the window. And again, it makes the inside out work perfectly and the pool is actually a separate room, but exterior. So let's talk a little bit more about this kitchen because it's a kosher kitchen as well. So yes. there's different elements you have to make sure you work in, two sinks and having two, two prep areas. We have the meat in, uh, on this side with the meat sink and then the dairy on that side with its own stove top and oven. The refrigerator is interesting because we didn't use top of the line Sub-Zero we, uh, we went to something that's 25% of the cost wow. of that. And it savings. looks just fine. Yeah, it truly looks like a built-in refrigerator. And that, that you mentioned that though, if you have not priced built-in refrigeration, as you said, that is such a great value, it creates that affordable luxury. Also, we have the quartz countertops. Uh, great for cleaning, great for maintenance, uh, but it's also affordable luxury. It's another great way to bring in that look of marble. And of course, like you said, no maintenance. Can we talk about this? 
Yes. The hood is super cool. It's a hood, a regular stainless steel hood, but we put a special drywall around it going all the way up to create that linear vertical element. The problem with the stainless steel hood, it's, it has a certain style that you may or may not want and just wrapping it with the drywall, very uh, efficient and um, not expensive and creates a, a talking element here. Absolutely, kitchen. it really fits that whole Florida modern style of architecture. This is a very modern kitchen, so awesome. What a great feature. Next on SoFlo Home Project, we look at simplistic elegance and the ideal pool placement. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're continuing our tour of this beautiful home with the architect who designed it, Eddie Vasquez. Eddie, I think this might be my favorite part of the whole house. Yes, definitely. The pool has a sleek modern look that complements the home's architecture and has great flow with the living areas of the home. When we were in the interior, we talked about the way you had this sort of L-shaped area of windows. They all open up, all of these sliding doors open up fully to the outside. Talk to us about designing an indoor-outdoor living area like this. Uh, yes, uh, when we're outside, I call it the outdoor-indoor because now instead of the exterior being an extension of the interior, now the interior is a backdrop for the exterior. Absolutely, and a beautiful one at that. Thank you. <laughs> so what I love about the view from out here is that you really can like step back and see into the entire home. Is there any special considerations that someone would need to think about when planning an indoor-outdoor space? Uh, yes, especially with the pool, you have to look at the sun, the direction of the sun, morning, evening, and you have to also uh, see the relationship to the rooms and the pool. In this case, we put the pool on the side yard. Most designs are the pool in the rear. Okay. But this, uh, in this design, we purposely left a lawn space here, a wide space, so we can put the pool, a nice grass area, and paving a deck all the way around. Absolutely, and, and what I also want to point out to our viewers is that the, here on the decking is the same tile as the interior. So it kind of also really helps create that cohesive flow of indoor out by using the same material on the deck. Talk to us a little bit more about the, the overhangs here, because the way you've created it, it's almost like having a completely shaded area to be able to enjoy a meal. Is there a special consideration given to be able to have enough of that to create more covered spaces? Yes, and in, in this case, we chose not to put any columns. It is an overhang wide enough to have covered terrace, but we had the beams go into the house and cantilever out to provide okay, so that. So you're able to kind of get that clean look without the columns. It definitely makes a difference to keep this all open for sure. Yeah, a big difference. If you would have columns here, it would just take away the openness. Yeah, it blocks, I think, all of this whole indoor-outdoor vibe. Eddie, so another thing I noticed is the way you've also carried over the wood slats from what we saw in the formal dining room into this area over here by the family room. Yes, you have to be very careful not to use the same material too many times, but you know, two or three times will be good. And we change the aspect of how we use it. Here it's on a wall, solid. There we use it as a divider that you see through. Such a nice way to divide a space and still keep it light and open. Well, Eddie, it's truly been a pleasure touring your work. I love when we can have architects give the view of how everything is built. In order to achieve modern design, you need to be clean, simple, and accessible. The client came to me and wanted to build a custom home, but they were on an absolute budget. We decided to go one story, save in money, but we had a large enough lot to achieve a pool, uh, an L-shaped house with all the amenities of a luxury home. This project was fulfilling because we were able to achieve modern design on a lower budget. And it was very satisfying because the owner uh, loves the house. She calls me all the time thanking me on how beautiful it is and it's exactly what she dreamed of. And now let's see what Hunter Frankie from SoFlo Health has for us tomorrow. Hunter, what's going on? 
Hey there, Elena. I'm in the kitchen with a delicious black bean and avocado salad that we'll make tomorrow on SoFlow Health. Plus, we'll get cycling and show you what they're doing to protect you from COVID. We'll talk to Morgan about staying committed to your New Year's resolutions and health. We'll talk about different bandages, which ones do what and why you might need them. Plus, Aniva goes repelling. It's all tomorrow right here on SoFlow Health at 1230. Thanks, Hunter. We will definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, thank you for joining us this week. And we hope to see you again next week for another episode of SoFlo Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like home. SoFlo Home. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, we get expert advice on all things hardware. We look at the latest trends and options for this jewelry for the home. If you miss any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. You could also submit your own design disasters, and you never know, we could be knocking on your door to help. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram.